Roraida Tena Tata Katoa. Dr. Shane Ritty. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I had Oranga Tirama in Iwi, Pioram Mai Tato. Mr. Speaker, it's a pleasure to rise and speak to the Nai Taiki Tamaki Claim Settlement Bill today here in its first reading. The journey for this bill starts on the 26th of February, in fact, a bit before that, but on the 26th of February 2010, the Crown recognised the mandate of Nai Taiki Tamaki Tribal Trust, the census, 2013 census, of roughly 498 members. And here we are today, the second to last sitting day of this, the 51st Parliament, and this settlement process is now making its way through the House. Mr Speaker, the benefits of the settlement will be available to all members of Naitaiki Tamaki wherever they live. The redress was negotiated by the Naitaiki Tamaki Tribal Trust. Now, some redress in Naitaiki Tamaki deed of settlement is also jointly provided for with Ngāti Whanaunga, Ngāti Tama Oho, Ngāti Kohariki and the Marutuahuhu Collective. Members of the House have talked to some parts of the uh, settlement. I also have uh, drawn out parts that uh, I thought were particularly poignant. I won't redress what others have spoken to. Uh, I would also just comment that uh, Naitaiki Tamaki are one of the 12 iwi groups in the Hauraki Collective and one of the 13 iwi groups included in the Namana Whenua or Tamaki Makaurau Collective Redress Act 2014. If we look at uh, part one of the uh, bill, Mr Speaker, the historical account, uh, much of that has been presented here today. So I'll move on to the acknowledgement. I wanted to highlight several sections. Uh, what I first wanted to highlight was uh, section five. And I uh, wanted to read here, the Crown acknowledges that by failing to set aside one-tenth of the lands purchased during the preemption waiver period for public purposes, especially the establishment of schools and hospitals for the future benefit of Māori, including Nai Taiki Tamaki, it breached the Treaty of Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi and its principles. I think what struck me next was subsection 10. The Crown acknowledges that its agent pressured Nai Taiki Tamaki to pay their rivals to withdraw challenges to the Nai Taiki Tamaki applications for title to the Whakakaifara and Urangahau Hau blocks. Section 11 then strikes me. The Crown acknowledges that Nai Taiki Tamaki permanently lost the ownership and use of the land at Mataitai, despite the Crown's assurance that this land would be used for the rehabilitation of returned servicemen, as my colleague Nukoroko spoke to, including a Nai Taiki Tamaki serviceman when it purchased the land. And uh, member uh, Nukoroko uh, described how that, uh, that came about. Uh, I think if we move to the apology, uh, what I found interesting there was, and we've heard from the Minister several parts to the apology, but it was actually subsection 10A. Nai Taiki Tamaki sought to establish mutually beneficial relationships with European settlers and the Crown by welcoming them into the rohe and offering land, but the Crown did not honour this gesture. Instead, its acts and omissions undermined relationships that should have been based on goodwill and mutual benefit. The Crown broke its promise to protect your interests confiscated your whenua and promoted policies which had devastating economic, social and cultural consequences for Naitai Kitamaki. The cultural redress is extensive, a vesting of 15 cultural redress properties. Part three, the commercial redress. The commercial redress talks to commercial property redress and minerals in such associated lands other than what the Crown Minerals Act 1991 allows. And there's also a right of first refusal. As was mentioned by my colleague, the financial redress is $12.7 million, with 500000 already on account. Uh, Mr Speaker, I look forward to this bill coming to the uh, Select Committee so that we can explore it, so that we can take public submissions and hear what the voice of the public uh, say on this bill. We always find that when we take public submission that our final deliberations are always better. They're always more informed. Very rarely does the initial bill, as it appears, end up being its final, final form, and I think that's a good thing. So, Mr Speaker, I'm very much looking forward to this bill coming to Select Committee, and at its first reading, I commend it to the House. Mr Speaker. Marama Davidson. Tēnā koe e te mangai o te whare, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora tātou, he mihi nui kia koe.